Hello guys, you're welcome to my YouTube channel. You're welcome to Vitri Entertainment TV. Please don't forget to subscribe, comment, drop your comments, like and share. You know, this slavery is from Miriam. So I saw it on YouTube and this is the best slavery documentary I've ever watched. Honestly, this is the best. So I decided to bring it so my fans can also watch it. So please join me, let's watch it together. First, don't forget to subscribe, comment, and like, and share. Thank you, one love. That Queen Elizabeth the last time, people were saying, I know what Queen Elizabeth did to um, Africans, blah, blah, blah. So I said, okay, I'm going to make some research. And finally, guess where I am? Badagri. This is slave port Badagri, and we are at Seriki Farabi Williams, about slave museum. And the curator is going to take us around the museum. Museum. Follow me as I show you guys around. Let's go. Eriki Far um, Faremi Williams about Barracoon of 40 slaves. So let's go inside. You would not see this anywhere. Nobody's gonna tell you the truth. Okay. This is our curator, so it's gonna take us around. And this is the man that helped us look it here. Yeah. So you're welcome. Thank My you. Name is Once again. Nice to meet What's you. What's your name? Ma? Miriam. Miriam. Uh, with that name Miriam, I can't tell you where you come from. What's your native name? Ma? Me, I don't, I don't have one. You don't have one? I, I used to be a Muslim, so Miriam is a Muslim name. Miriam is a Muslim yeah, name. Yeah, my name is Miriam Oyakilome actually. Okay. Yes. Uh, sir, what's your name sir? My name is Michael. Michael, what's your native name sir? Abayomi. Abayomi. With that name Abayomi, I immediately know that Abayomi is from the Yoruba. But with your name Miriam, I can't tell you where it comes from. It's an Arabic name. With my name Moshud, I can't tell us where I come from. Who are you from? Moshud is an Islamic name. Anybody can be a Moshud. Okay. I just want you to know how powerful African names are. My name is Bami Dili. Can you tell me where I come from with that Yoruba name? Yoruba land. Yes. We African, we have a name that tells story, history, or directory. Through your name, someone can look at you. As an African, through your name, someone can tell you where you come from. But during slave era, slaves don't have identity. They bear their master's name or any name their master wish to give to them. Like when you buy a dog and you give your dog any name you wish to give to your dog. If the white man that is slave are forefathers, retain our forefathers name it will be very easy for the black americans to repatriate back to their people but because they don't retain their name it's not easy for the blacks over there to trace their roots the world know this compound as brazilian barracoon most slaves taken from this compound were being taken to brazil and most of them were yoruba origin today in brazil there's a god mostly worshipped by the yoruba it's called yemoja in brazil they call it lemeja eshu they call it izu yalaka they call it akaraje shongo they call it zango that's what you know there were Yorubas that have been moved from this compound down to Brazil and they still practice the same culture. And Baracon is a Spanish word. It means dungeon, storehouse or slave cell where slaves have been kept. In this compound we have to turn about 40 rooms. Okay. During slave era, 40 slaves were being kept in each room. Okay. 40 times 40, 1,600 slaves were being moved in and out of this compound every 3 to 4 months. Mm. And this compound belongs to Seriki Williams Abbas. This is the man in the senator. His birth name was Ifare Belekun Ifadbe. How come the name changed to be Sediki Williams Abbas? This young man was captured at the age of six in a town called Jogarili in Ugo State during the Abbas and Dawome War. He was captured by a slave trader called Abbas. Abbas was a black man, an Islamic scholar who lived in Dawome. Abbas took the young, this young man to Dawome and made him a domestic slave. We have two categories of slave, the field slave and the domestic. The field slave work on the farm, the domestic the work, yes, field. Okay, field. Okay, yes, the field slave work on the farm, the domestic work in the master house. Abbas used him as a domestic slave. Later they sold him to a white man called Williams. Williams took Ifare Mlekun to Brazil and gave him education. Through Williams, Ifare Mlekun speak English, Dutch, Spanish and Portuguese. Mm. And while working for Williams, whenever Williams is going out for his business, he takes this young man along with him, consciously showing him his business. One day, Williams called him, young man, come, let me set you free on one condition, you work for me. And Ifare Mlekun grabbed the offer as the only opportunity he has to be a free person. When Ifare Mlekun left Brazil, he first settled in Lagos Island, then they called it Lagos Colony. He came to resettle in Baragri in this compound in the year 1840, when the second master Williams built this compound in the year 1840. In 1895, Ifare Mlekun was to abandon Seriki Musulumi of Baragri. They made him the paramount ruler in Baragri. He ruled Baragri for 24 years. I will tell you much about him when we enter the museum. Let's see this other side. Okay. In the olden days in Africa, we have our own currency that we spend, our own money. If you have 100 nanotes, if anybody have 100 nanotes, I will show you some of this money I want to mention on that 100 Naira no, note. Yes, there. thank you. At the back of this 100 nanotes, we have what we call Manila. This two covering is called Manila, used by the Portuguese. This, are, uh, this is yellow salt. It's like a precious stone, a white stone. And these are cowrie shells. This is what? 
manila yellow salt curry shells and tobacco that is for cigarettes these days was used as currency then mm. thank you when you don't came they list all these things i mentioned as money so they bring in the idea of trade by butter when they bring in the idea of trade by butter if you can give our forefather one uh, ceramic bowl in exchange of 10 human beings oh, asleep okay one yeah. of these one of these ceramic bowl we call it breakable plate 10 sleep we start five plates i will show you when we enter the museum mm -hmm. a then gone yoruba quality bon shakabula was using an exchange of 40 human being a slave the mirror doesn't have specific number the isb that get the price we call it bargain power the big cannon gun which is holding this bomb was using an exchange of 100 slave the short one 40 slave the bottle of gin was using an exchange of 10 human being a slave they are not after the liquor in the bottle but the design on the bottle i show you a surviving bottle 1873 from vienna austria one umbrella was used in exchange of 40 human beings asleep. The question is, we Africans or black men, what do we do with the dengon and the cannons? We easy to fight ourselves to get more slaves to sell to the whites. We sold ourselves into slavery. And these two doors have been here since 1840 when this compound was established. It's part of our, ma our monument. People who are the world come to see. Yes, what since 1840. 1840. Yes. So out of 40 rooms, 38 of the rooms are currently occupied by Sidiki Williams about the descendant. So the federal government went, met with the family in this compound that they should retain two cells the way it were. So they gather most of the relics and some of these items used in exchange of slaves in those two rooms for people over the world to see. Let's go inside the rooms and see what we have inside. Okay, this was the cell, as small as it is. Oh. So you're welcome. Out of 40 rooms, we are standing in one of the rooms. All rooms are like this. Where we are standing here is called a waiting cell. This is where European check slaves don't buy before they buy them. The same way we check animals before buying, the same way they check human beings. They take the eyes, they check the dentition, they hit them in the stomach to nip their feet. Because their aim and objective is to take them to where they are taking them to, to work for them on the farm. So they need healthy sleep. Slaves above 35, 40 are called Macrons. European rejects such sleep. Any slave rejected by the European, they don't return them back to where they were captured. They kill them or feed them to animals. And we have the inner room, which is called the dark room, where they keep 40 people. We are still going there. Here we have what we call ankle chakos. They easy to join two slaves together while working on the farm. One in the leg of the first slave, one in the leg of the second slave. Shall we try it? Okay. Yeah. On me? No, we are not slaves. Time. Yeah. Okay. Like this, and they start this one. And put pan on it. Can I try to move with this? Oh, I'm going drag me. Along with you. Two people work with this for 18 hours on the farm and they have 15 minutes to rest. They want to eat, drink water, pee, excrete. Within 15 minutes, they continue another hour for another 18 hours. These things are made of metal. It always puts wounds around the ankle. Nobody cares because slaves are property and you can do anything you like with your property. The difference between a slave and your sunshade is because a slave has life. If you get angry, you can break your sunshade. The same thing to slave. If you get angry, you can kill your slave and nobody will ask you for that. And here is a surviving umbrella used in exchange of 40 human beings. This umbrella was made of wood, brass, silk, and cane. This umbrella was made of wood, brass, silk, and cane. As heavy as this umbrella is, one slave boy has to put it on the head of the master as long as the master will stay outside. And if a slave boy is putting this umbrella on the head of the master, he should plead his shoulder not to disappoint him. Because if this umbrella should drop on the hand of the, of the slave boy on the head of the master, they will be head this way. This umbrella was not designed for the sun, not for the rain. Just to share the person in the community. You want to try the weight? Lift it from here to know the weight. About 30 to 35 kg, one person will hold it on the head of the master as strong as the master will stay outside. That chain on that wall behind you there, and this chain in this glass here, they use it to kill the slaves. Then, when we enter the second cell, I will show you how to do lynching with these two chains. And this iron is called branding iron. What's the name again, ma? Yeah. If I'm Miriam's slave, my name should be Miriam. So Miriam will put this iron in the fire, red hot, and she uses it to write Miriam on my chest. If she woman to write it at the back. What's your name again, sir? Michael. If Miriam should buy me today and brand me Miriam, if Michael should buy me tomorrow, yeah. Michael will have to brand me again. Miriam brand me today, Michael will have to brand me tomorrow because I've become Michael sleep. Let's go inside the dark room where they keep 40 people. Yeah. 
That's why we call it dark room. Dark room. These three glasses were not there. This is where they keep positive. What you man been in this room three to four months? This is where the pee, this is where the street. Because of the odor, some will vomit. Even women or men have to do it on themselves here. Oh. 40 people in this place three to four months, that's the only ventilation they have. And there was a door here before they locked the door. So they'll be here for three to four months. Let's see cost them to pull out that in this kind of situation. That's why I do tell people whenever we are here, we are not here to catch them. But just to feel the pain the people in the past have felt. Our freedom fighters. Here we have a surviving bottle use an exchange of 10 human beings asleep. Like I said earlier, they are not after the liquor in this bottle, but the design on the bottle. Many people have asked me, where is the design on this bottle that was 10 human beings? If you put on your flash, you'll see the design on, your on the bottle. On your flash. You can check it. That is the design. That was why they used it in exchange of 10 people. So that bottle represents 10 human beings because yeah. of that design you saw. And this is a gramophone record used by Sadiq Williams Abbas. These days we use cassette CDs, most times we use our phone. And this brass was given to Sadiq as a gift by the Brazilian when they made him the paramount ruler. And this kettle was given to him by the European. These are cowrie shells used in those days. Here we have surviving ceramic bowls used in exchange of 10, 10 human beings asleep. It doesn't matter the size. This was used in exchange of 10, 10 can have to this and the rest. So we have 50 human beings in this glass. Because Sadiq was a Muslim then, this is where they keep his water for ablution, his soup pot and his drinking pot. Let's see the second cell and see what's inside. Mm. So you're welcome to the second room. Like I said earlier, all the rooms are the same. A waiting cell and the dark room. Here's a local mannequin showcasing St. Key Williams Abbas Club. The original cloth he wore the day they made him the paramount ruler. This is it. Here. And the chair is sat under the chair over there. And here is punishment given to any disloyal slave. Any slave that refused the master order or refused to bear the master's name, these are the tied around the tree and beat them. During the process, many died because they can't bear the pain. And these dogs are cochlear dogs. They usually to chase runaway slaves. If any slave tried to escape from the farm, they release 20 of these dogs to attack one man. When they catch the slave, they devour the slave. Here's the movement to the point of no return. Chains on the neck, the hands, and the leg of the slave while going to the point of no return. 3,000 men on a row, on a single file. If the person in front will fall, the rest behind them will fall. If you are going to the point of no return today, while going, you will see a well called Spirit at a nation well. The well water they give the slave then that make them to lose their memory is still on that island. And here is the story building built for Sadiq Williams Abbas in this compound, year 1847, it collapsed 1995. When we go outside, I will show you the remains of the building. These are some people captured as slaves but have opportunity to come back, like Santo Silva, Candido G, Darocha, Samuel Ajay Krada, Jaja Okobo, and some other people. The entrance door in this photo is the original door standing here, behind you. After the building collapsed, they moved the door inside this room. And these are some of the things that happened to our people during slavery. These are slave readers, they want to capture this man. But he took knife and killed himself. That for me to be slave, I prefer to die. There was a woman like that, Margaret Ghana. She killed four of her children and killed herself. That for me and my children to be slave, we prefer to die. This is what we call iron muzzle. They used to guard the mouth of slaves while working on the farm. For them not to eat from the farm product. They plant sugar cane. We derive glucose from sugar cane. Glucose gives instant energy. And this white may believe that if these slaves should eat out of this sugar cane, they will have strength to fight back. They feed slaves once in a day. Slaves have access to water once in a day. They don't feed slaves to increase in size or to stay healthy. They feed them to stay alive. Don't just die. And this is another matchbox. We don't have many slaves used in exchange of the box. This is called Ashwe 2 by the Yorubas used by Seriki Williams Abbas. Let's see another room for 40 people. Here we have a sample of the iron corrugated sheet they use in roofing this compound then compared to the one they produce these days. If I try to fold this iron sheet, it won't. But the one they produce these days, I can fold that keep in my pocket. We've lost quality. The two chains I showed you in the first room, the one on the wall, the one in the glass, this is what they use it for. If they catch any slave having sexual intercourse on the plantation, planning poop against the master or trying to run away, these are the young men, these are the young women. The tie that chain I showed you around the ribs of the men, the hands at the back. The anger mongalo, the suspended leg from the ground. In this position, that chain will break the ribs. They'll be dripping blood from the nose and the mouth. They'll be here dying gradually. These are the angry women. They are too handsome. They suspend the leg from the ground. 
The blood from the hand, the head, all over the body will come to the tie. They get heavier and they will be dead and dead. In the presence of other sleep, as you see them, they won't last a day. And here, we have Sediki Williams Abbas Relaxation Chair. For someone to have this kind of chair in those days, it shows how prominent he was. And these are Seriki descendants. Currently, Baragi, if anybody is to be elect as Seriki of Baragi, the person should be from this family. And this is the current Seriki of Baragi. Let's see where Seriki Abbas was buried in this compound. This well was dug in the year 1847 by the slaves. If you look inside the well, they didn't use ring for the well. They used burnt bricks. So they set the bricks one by one. So they it was done by the slaves. Burnt bricks. Okay, okay. And the same burnt bricks they use in constructing all the rooms okay. in this compound. Okay. In 1962, the family of Sereki Williams Abbas used cement to hold the walls. Okay. This place used to be Sediki Williams Abbas Court, okay. where he passes judgment to the Muslim community and where he had meeting with any king in Nigeria down to have meeting with him then. And this place used to be his chamber where he relaxed himself. That relaxation chair was inside this room then. Okay. We still have some rooms behind this. Let's see. So all these rooms were slave cell. But we have people living in these rooms now, here. Okay. So all in total, 40 rooms and 40 slaves in each. And all the rooms are the same, a waiting cell and the dark room. Mm. We can see sample of the burnt bricks mm -hmm. around here. The story building that was built for Sidi Abbas in okay. the year 1847 okay. that collapsed 1995 was standing here. Okay. This is the remains of the building. Here's the foundation. Okay. And all these rooms also were okay. slave cell. When Seriki Williams Abbas died, this is where he was buried. Seriki Abbas died 11th of June 1919 and he was buried here. Sorry. 103 years ago that he died, he was buried here. Later, the Brazilian came back to build this mausoleum on his grave. Why? Because they see him as a loyal person. Someone that was captured as slave, later freed, and he continued the business because his, ma his master has asked him to continue the business. He was just like the two I see for the master here. The master cannot be here and be in his hometown at the same time doing the business. So he needs somebody that he can trust, that will understand our people language here. That was why he sent yeah. Seriki down to Nigeria. And this is the tomb of the last son, Saka Ajao Abbas. He was given birth to 1913. He was at the age of six when his father died. His father was at the age of six when he was captured as a slave, and he died 1987 at the age of 74. So you're welcome to Brazilian Barracoon. Do you have any question? I'm so, I'm so weak. I don't even know what to ask. Do you guys have any question? Like, my mentality has really changed coming here. A lot of things has changed. My mindset and I was even emotional in there when I when you tried to use that stuff on my leg. I couldn't move. I saw move. it in your eyes. But I, you almost dropped tears. I almost did. I saw it. I, can't, I don't know what to ask. Uh, Do you guys if, have any if you don't have any question, maybe if you see some other museums, you may have question. We okay. still have like four okay, other sites. Shall them? we? Okay. We shall. So, this compound. Mm used to be slave cell okay. where they keep the slaves okay. while waiting for the arrival of the slave ship okay. the slave ship will spend up to three to four months on the sea before getting to this place okay. so they'll keep the slaves in this uh, compound for three to four months that's why i said they moved 1600 slaves into this compound and out of this compound every three to four months okay. and while taking them out there was a road here before so okay. they'll cross them through this lagoon okay. to the other side okay. and they walk on that island it is called Berefu Island okay. before they take them to the point of no return okay. and while going by the right we will see the spirit at the nation well if you wish to see the point of we no return to. we will go let's everywhere. go we wish to hi guys so we're going to the first story building two story building right first, yes that's one story building one story building in Nigeria first story building when was it built it was built in 1845. Okay. Okay, let's go inside and see. 
This is first story building in Nigeria, built in 1845. Mm -mm -mm. This is fun. So, how are we going to do So, you're welcome to the first story building in Nigeria. If you look at this compound, then we have total number of 10 buildings in this compound then other nine buildings have collapsed except this story building that is still standing when we enter inside this building i will show you where those buildings were standing okay if you look at this board this signboard the road boarding house there's another one over there schoolmaster house there's another one there the church and there's one here the kitchen so this place that you Mission see house. these signs mm. buildings were standing there before okay. but they've collapsed so we just put these signs to indicate that the building was standing there before let's go inside the building Yes, no. So, you're welcome to the first story building in Nigeria. First story building built by Reverend C. A. Goma the first time. Reverend C. A. Goma first built this building in the year 1843. And this is what this building looks like then. When Reverend C. A. Goma built this building, he built it with planks only wood but when reverend henry townsend came in he rebuilt it with bond bricks the way it looks like currently that was when uh, reverend henry townsend rebuilt this building with bond bricks and reverend c egoma with planks here we have some of the things they use in constructing the building this nail we all know this nail right but do we know these nails? No. No. They use these nails on the soft woods. They use this one on the hard woods. Okay. And in this glass, we have some old hinges they use behind the doors. These are the old hinges and sample of the burnt bricks they use in constructing the building. And here is the same iron corrugated sheet I showed you in the barracoon. Mm -hmm. There's another one here. And look at the foundation. You see that they use burnt bricks and they set the bricks one by one. In this building, we have to turn about six rooms. We we'll visit the first room, we we'll visit another room. And let me quickly show you this is the geographical architecture map as it is in 1843. This is the story building, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Plus the story building making 10. But these nine buildings have collapsed, except this one that is still standing. So let's see the next room. In this room, we have the painting of a tree called Agia Tree. Under this tree, Christianity was first proclaimed in Nigeria. When the missionaries came in, what they, what are we preaching to these people? And they discovered that many market women come under this tree to showcase their market. So they decided to preach this gospel under this tree. This tree lasted for 350 years. And after the fall of this tree, the government built this monument in replace of the tree. Yes. And this monument is no more there. They want to rebuild it. I will show you if you want to see it when we are going. And Okay, you've seen it. Okay. And this is the comment by Reverend Henry Townsend, the man who built this building. He said, This house is strong and convenient and will prove very comfortable during the direction. Many persons have come to see it, especially of the single roof. It's been the first I have ever seen. The person who built it. That was what he wrote. 
And here is a Christmas celebrated in Badagri in 1923. You can see these black men. They are the laborers working in this place then. You can see the road 1923, Badagri, Mary X Mass. So let's see the third road. So this third room used to be the room of the first Western teacher. Okay. First teacher in Nigeria. This is in here, Mr. Claudius Phillips. He came in with the early missionaries. And the first set of students, they were enrolled in the school. This man was the one who taught them how to read and how to write. They want our people to accept Christianity. And they discovered that these people don't understand their language. So they have to teach us how to read and how to write. And here is the first primary school. It's at the back of Mobile Filling Station. If you want to see the school, it's still standing. I will show you if you want to see it. We, we want I will to. take you there. And the first set of students that were enrolled in this school were 40 men. Not women, not children. 40 men. And each one of them spent 12, 12 years in school. The youngest among them then was at age of 46. And each one of them spent 12, 12 years in school. I just imagine when my father would come back from school and tell me, ah, our teacher flogged me because I don't know. <laughs> Let's go. So this is the total estimated amount there is in constructing all the buildings in this compound there. 325 Dollar. pounds. Oh, pounds, sorry. Yes, 325 pounds. To construct all the 10 buildings in this compound then let's go upstairs and see the room of bishop samuel ajayi crowder let's go upstairs and see the room of bishop samuel ajayi crowder so you're welcome to the room of bishop samuel ajayi crowder the man who translated the first english bible to yoruba bible and here is the first english bible brought by the early missionaries reverend henry townsend in the year 1842 because reverend henry townsend came in in the year 1842 and this is the first yoruba bible translated in the year 1845 three years interval and this is the photo of bishop samuel ajay crowder bishop samuel ajay crowder was also a slave and here is his name this is his birth name ajay this is the name given to him by the master, and this is the name of the master. Crowder. Crowder. Bishop Samuel Ajayi Crowder, when he came back, he had a chaplain called Babington Macaulay. Babington Macaulay married to Bishop Samuel Ajayi Crowder's daughter, and they gave birth to a boy called Abat Macaulay. Let's see the next room. In this room, we have the photo of Reverend C.A. Goma, the man in charge of the building. And we have the photo of Reverend Henry Townsend, the man who rebuilt this building the way it is. And this is the photo of Thomas Birch Freeman, the man who sowed the seed of Christianity in Nigeria. Let's see. This room. Here is the cemetery of the early missionaries. Total number of missionaries buried here were 140. Okay. And this cemetery is not far from here. It's along the General Hospital Road. And the missionaries living in this room then, uh, in this building then, they have their saving bank where they keep their valuables and money. And here we have, we have some of the old currency we spend in Africa then. These are carry shells, and these are the coins mm. we spend then before they introduce notes. This is one around notes. Ah, this is about my calling. You can see. Can you guys post open it? Let's see. Okay. One era. Let me tell you a funny story about this one era note. Okay. When I was young, my brother stole this one era note from my father, and he took it to school thinking that he can finish this money just in a day. He went to school with this money. He bought things for his friend. He bought for himself. And this is a note. If you buy anything with a note, with this one around note, then you come back home with coins. They'll give you coins as change. When he spent the money, he discovered that he still had many change with him. And when he was coming back from school, 
the coins were jingling in his pocket. Mm-hmm. And my father said, come, you stole my money. He said, no, where do you have those money with you? Mm-hmm. Then this one error note is just like 10,000 error. Then that one person cannot finish in a day. But these days, if you give me 100,000 now, I'll finish it within seconds. Let's go downstairs. We'll go downstairs mm-hmm. and see the well called Miracle Well. Miracle Well? Yes. Is it the first well? No, that was not the first well. We have many wells in Miami. Yes, this is the miracle what does it do? well. This well was dug in the year 1842. Okay. And since this well was dug, it has never run dry, it doesn't change color, and it doesn't have taste. Many people visited this place, and when they hear about the water, they develop interest. Some people took this water home and prayed on it, and came back to testify that when they pray on this water, it really worked for them. You can see these women here, they came to pray on this water and they will take it home. That was why they named it Miracle Well. Tourists named it Miracle Well, not the missionaries. Every other well water has iron in it. But this well water doesn't have iron. It's drinkable. This water is drinkable. And it's out the people in this area. Every other well water on this axis has connection with the lagoon water. If the lagoon is neat, every other well water will be neat. If the lagoon is dirty, every other well water will be dirty except this water. Do you want to try it? Okay. Shall we drink? Yes, I want to. But we don't have time. Okay. I want to try it. Yes. I want to try it. 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 I want to I cover this water in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. As I drink you, no cause harm to me. Hey, let's go. <laughs> Ooh, with my hair, let's go again. Does it taste like well water? No. That's why they named it Miracle Well. It not taste like well water. Oh. It's, it's just water. And it's clean in my mouth. like the sea well water I drink. It's very clean. So, shall we? We shall. Yeah. You're welcome to the first story building in Nigeria. Let's proceed. We are through here. We're done here. Yeah. Hi guys, this is day two in Badagri. So today we are going to the point of no return. We will return in Jesus' name. That's where the slaves were being taken to. And any slave that crosses this water and goes there never returns back to Nigeria. So let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Curator of the best creator of, of, of all time. Good morning. Morning. Guys, so we are here by the Green Slave Route. This is the route of the journey to unknown destination. What does it mean, the route to unknown destination? When we get there, I will show everyone why we call it the point of no return and why we call it unknown destination. I won't tell you, but everyone will see it with their own eyes why we call it unknown destination. The way we move, from that jetty to this jetty, we cross on the water. Then, the same way they move the slaves. But with, not with this kind of boat, but with paddle boats. And 3,000 men cannot stay in one boat. They will have many boats. So they paddle the boats to this place. Then by dropping them, they will have to join everybody together. 
two. They will they'll be on a single file. They call the movement single file. One line. Everybody will be on a single file. Straight down to the point of no return where we are going to. And they have chakus on their hands, the necks and the leg. So they are the way we want to move now, we we move freely because we don't have chains on our leg. Then they have to move like this. So if we are spending 30 minutes or 10 minutes to get to that place, let's imagine how many minutes they will spend in those days under hot sun and with heavy chains on their neck, the hands and the leg. So and they will still be flogging them. Most especially the person at the back. So let's proceed. So what is this island called? This island is called Berefu Island. Okay. And this island used to be the route they take this leaf through. Okay. This is where our forefathers worked for 400 years because this leaf lasted for 400 years. Oh. And this island has been in existence before Badagri. Badagri was found in 14th century, 1425 to be precise, okay. uh, by a famous farmer on this island called Agbede. Agbede, Agbede means blacksmith. Agbede has a farm across the lagoon over there. So whenever people from this village are going to Agbede's farm, Farm in a good language means grime. So whenever people are going to Agbede's farm, they will say, I'm going to Agbede Grime. Agbede Grime. From there, the Yoruba settlers, they can't pronounce Grime because it's not their language. So they pronounce it as Agbadarigi. Okay. So from Agbadarigi, when the Europeans came in, they corrupted it and changed it to Badagri. Oh. From Agbede Grime to Agbadarigi to Badagri. So that was where the name Badagri came. So right now, how long are we going to walk? Because me, I'm tired. I'm not asleep. <laughs> My leg is pain me. We don't need work out. And no, no. We've not gotten to uh, the spirit as a notion well. Okay. It's in the middle of the week. The mid of the week. Of... Okay, okay, okay. So that's the way that uh, if they drink the water, they will lose their memory. Yes. According to the story, Nigeria has largest supply of sleep. 24%. Nigeria and Angola. Ghana has 16 percent so uh, it was told that it was because of this well mm. that makes Nigeria to have that kind of supply and when we get to the well I will tell you much about the well okay okay no wahala let's be going yeah okay. I'm still going I'm done my leg they pay me I'm not good like <laughs> but let's keep going yeah empty for my love but you are moving freely but yes. then they have to move like this and they will still be beating them on that hot sun. This is well. So why don't you want us to take bike? Why do you want us to feel the pains the slaves felt? So uh, we don't, I don't want us to use bike. Though if we use bike, it's easy. But if you don't use the bike, <laughs> you feel what our forefathers felt then. But if you use the bike, you won't really get what you came for. Okay. So let's work on this route and let viewers at home see the kind of journey our forefathers embarked on with chains on their neck, the legs. So you made mention neck. about something about um, what the white, they took the chains from yeah. our legs and... Uh, I've observed that uh, the white men, though I'm not a racist, I love the white. Mm. Yes, I love them a lot. I love blacks also. I love everyone. God created everyone in his image. Yes. He didn't say black, he didn't say white, he didn't say Indian. Mm. So we are all one. But I've discovered that they've moved the chain from our feet into our brain. Can you explain that, please? Uh, how did they remove the chain from the feet to the brain? With some of these things they gave to us. Let's see. They stole our education. They stole our freedom. They stole our business. They stole everything. All these things we are facing right now in Nigeria are those things they were facing then over there. We are blessed here in Africa. Everything we need, we have it here. But these people, some of these things we have, they don't have it. So they want to get it as much as they want. And because of our own greed, our brother's greed, mm. they want to accept any offer given by those people. And that offer, uh, we are not gaining anything from that offer. It's just like, there's a saying, they said, uh, at the end of the tunnel, there will always be what? At light. Of, yes. At the end of the tunnel, there will always be light. But let's use uh, that tunnel as an example. Tunnel is like a pipe. You enter from this edge and 
come out from the other end. Mm. Let's not bend the pipe into a circle. Mm. That's how they are ruling us, mm. those whites. Okay, how? Okay, let me say, if you bend a tunnel, you are moving around inside that tunnel. Mm. The tunnel is now a circle. Mm. You can't see the light. There's no way out. Mm. These people who know us are on top of the tunnel. Mm. We are inside the tunnel. Mm. They keep telling us, keep going. You soon see the lights. Keep going. Mm. And we don't know we are still moving. Okay, if someone should fall in that tunnel and we are still moving around, we come back and see that same person. Ah, but we saw when this person fell down here. So where is the way? Where is the light? Where are we going to? But our people are afraid to tell the truth. Why are we afraid to tell the truth? Why are we afraid to tell the truth? Everyone knows the right thing to do. Why are we not doing it? That's the question. Why are we not doing the right thing? Okay. I'll throw that question to everyone at home to answer. Why are we not doing the right okay, thing? Okay, no problem. Drop Why your you answer in the afraid? comment section. Oh, madam, tire or God, where will they go? We never reach halfway. Eh? <laughs> oh, we we'll go down back or this research will not do. No. Okay, guys, we are at the attenuation well. So what happened here? How did they discover this well? Who dug it? Was it a slave? Or was it... Um, who did? Uh, so you're welcome to the spirit attenuation well. The well water they give our forefathers then to make them to lose their memory and be less aggressive for three to four months. Why? This well was dug by the African chiefs. When the white men met with the African chiefs doing the business, that what can they do to avoid slave revolt on the ship? The African chiefs came together and they decided to dig this well. They dug this well, they added black magic in it. Together and they decided to dig this well. They dug this well, they added black magic in it. Ooh. So by taking the slaves from that jetty, the way we move to this place, but not as easy as we move. When they get to this place, they will fetch the water and there's incantation they recite before taking the water. I will send you that incantation. So they will recite it. After taking the water, this is the last thing our forefathers remember. And they will move them down to the point of no return where we are going to. That uh, black magic they added in this water will spend up to three to four months in our forefathers' brain. Because the ship will spend up to three to four months on the sea. It depends on the distance of the country they are taking them to. If the country is far, they will spend four months. If the country is close, they will spend three months. So for that three months, they won't remember anything. Everything. I just imagine that then, how would they feel when they get to unknown man's land? Run. What do you remember? Uh, I drank water uh, and after that. What about you? I drank water uh, and you? Uh, I drank water and uh, they forgot everything. Now they will have new memory. So they forget everything here. And male domestic slaves were mostly breeding Havana, Cuba. Havana, Cuba. Havana, Cuba. And male slaves were castrated that time. Were castrated? They castrate the male slaves. Because a white man cannot leave uh, a black slave at home with his wife or daughter. So they have to castrate them. The male slave became huge and tough. So they used them as domestic slaves. Uh, maybe they want to carry something, they want to work on the farm, maybe there's an issue between uh, the master and somebody, they will send that slave to go and fight. So that was how they used our forefathers. But out of the slaves that were castrated then, I was the only one that was not castrated and you have the opportunity to meet with me. You were Shall not we there? Proceed? No, you were not there! <laughs> People were asking if I was there. I was there, I was giving birth to 1802. He's just 27 years old, so he learned all of this. So let's go. We're going to the point of no return. Like, like I keep saying, we must return in Jesus' name. Yes, because we are not slaves. Yes. Yeah. Guys, so we are the place of no return. I don't know where if I don't feel good. It is well. So what do you have to say about this place? Uh, I welcome everyone to the point of no return. So... This is where they take our forefathers and from there they take them on the ship. Now, the way we move from that uh, jetty to this place, the same way they move the slave, but not as easy as we move because they have charcoals on them. And when they get to this place, 
there will be many boats here also the ship cannot come to the shore mm. the ship will park in the middle of the sea that's not the middle of the sea but where we see as the middle of the sea that's where the ship will park and they will bring many boats here so they will arrange the slave in those boats like 16 17 16 15 17 and the boats will take them to the ship they arrange them in the boat this is where our forefathers said bye to this country and why do we call this place the journey to unknown destination if you look at this water from that end round to this end here mm. if you look at it round to this end mm. i can't tell you if it is land that is after that water you can't tell me if it is forest that is after that water nobody can tell us what is after that water what you are just saying is water so if i take you on this water can you tell me where i'm taking you to no only if I tell you that this is where I'm taking you to on this water. That's why we call it the journey to unknown destination. See, why is that why the water is like this? Why is it like, yeah. like that place is high? That place is high and this place is low. That's how water looks like. So you're welcome to the point of no return. But we will return because we are not slaves. So you're welcome once again. So we are going to the slave market. Guys, look at this market. Let's proceed. Hi guys, so we are currently at the slave market. Slave market, right? Yes. So what were they doing here then? Vlikiti slave market. So this what is, is it called? Vlikiti slave market. So this is uh, where they sold uh, more than three thousand slaves. Every market days. Every market days. And we have uh, what we call dungeon. Sorry, can you increase your voice a little? There's what we call dungeon here, okay. underground cell. Okay. And you have privilege to see some of these things okay. here. So let's meet our curator here. Okay, this is our curator. Yes. Nobody want to take us around. Curator, hi. Nice to meet you. Nice so what meet. are you going to be showing us today? I'm showing you uh, the Badagri slave market. Oh, no, no. Okay. So this, what, what? You... Okay. Uh, when he finished, he will tell us about these people. This is, uh, these are the people that witnessed the signing of the abolition of slave trade. That witnessed the signing. I guess these are the missionaries. The missionary rules. This statue here mm. tell us about the the missionary rules. Okay. Can you go that way? About so I can the, take it very well abolition of slave trade okay let him finish and come and tell us about yes. it okay 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 if he studied history or how did he learn all of these things about um the history of our forefathers and slave trade so much should so how did you learn all of this did you study history oh thank you so much uh sometimes if i tell people that i don't have sound education they argue with me you're not you're, you didn't go to school I only finished secondary school, SSCE. You guys, for real? Yes. And people think you studied this trio? No, SSCE. I started uh, working in this museum the last week of January this year. And when I started, I was told that it would take me up to two months or a month before I understand everything. But uh, I got to understand everything within five days. <laughs> Because right from secondary school, I've learned that I don't need to cram anything in my head. Because if I cram something in my head, anytime I need it, I will have to rack my brain. Mm. I'll develop headache. So I have to swallow everything I observe or learn. So uh, the first day I came in, I followed the first curator. That was Connor Stone. I will partially say he's my mentor here. So I followed him the first day. I followed someone else the second day. I followed five different curators for five days. Mm -hmm. Then the sixth day. I got home and I called my younger sister that come. Uh, I'm working in the museum now, so let me take you. She said, uh -huh, don't speak English that you don't know or don't tell me what <laughs> you don't know. I said, don't worry, I will try. Then when I started, uh, she kept quiet. Then after I finished taking her, even if when I'm not inside the museum mm -hmm. and I started just five days, she clapped for me that I tried. And I said, no, I didn't try because I don't know much about it. This uh, tourism of a teen or this slave history has a long way. No one knows it all. But the little you know, make use of it and uh, try to explain to people in a way that they will understand, they will acquire knowledge from it. Okay. 
So you don't need to be perfect or you don't need to be educated or be rich before you can know things in life. Because to me, I believe in observation and I believe in learning. Every day I learn. Okay. Confidently, I can say what I learned in the street is far better than what I was taught in school. Mm. Because no, they don't teach most of these things in the school. Mm, even apart from that, in school, like I said before, I said uh, they've stole our education. In some other developed countries, uh, if a particular citizen has a talent, they will build that person on that talent. But in my own country, uh, they give us different kind of subject in the school like 13 or 14 subjects at the same time. So how can one brain keep everything like 14 subjects? No, it's not possible. Let's, our government, take a look at this in another way. We have many youths out there that have ideas, but who is ready to build that idea? Who is ready? That was why I said, we Africans, we know the right thing, but we are not doing it. Because uh, we have some top post person. I'm not here to encourage anybody or uh, to give anybody inspiration to talk to anybody anyhow. And I'm not engaged anybody. But I just want uh, leaders to know that there are many things we are lacking in Africa. And they know some of these things they're supposed to do. We have youth that are ready to do things, to make change. Let's give them the chance to do the right thing. I won't say more than that. Mm. That's very nice know, of you, but I am shocked that you didn't even study history and I, I must tell you there are many people that study history and they do not know of this, uh, they do not know much, as much as you do about slave trade and I'm really impressed more should. Thank you so much. Thank God you bless much. you. Amen. So what, you what, I, what advice do you have for people out there that... Um, the only advice I would give to people out there is that as an African, you know, the world's greatest fear is when the blacks unite. And why can't we unite? When you know what you are doing is right, you are doing the right thing, continue to do it. Forget about what people say. Mm. Forget about what you come across. If you are walking on a road and the road is smooth, go back. That place is not good. But if the road goes zigzag, keep going. No problem. So some people were saying in the comment that we can contribute money for you. What do you think about that? Um, like, to just support you because you really enlightened us. A lot of us didn't know about all of these things until I came here and then I posted videos. Okay. Uh, no, I saw some of the comments, though. I really appreciate everyone. So you very, think we should well. put your number down there? No problem. Uh, for the appreciation, uh, I will say a big thank you before the appreciation All to right. everyone at home. Thank I you really very much, it. Thank you so much. It was nice meeting you. Thank hey. you. So much. Thank you. There's so, one thing. Okay. Uh, I want to make a request. What? Can I give you a hug? Give me a hug. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome, Mashud. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome.